Our next guest says, quote, unlike years past, Apple may not be able to rely on strong iPhone sales to drive its share price higher. That analyst is Tom Forte of DA Davidson. Uh, he has a hold on the stock, 180 price target. All right, explain yourself, Tom. Why aren't you more positive in terms of what this will mean to driving the stock price? Sure, so basically, David, in years past, you could count on the iPhone, which is still the most important product as far as largest percentage of sales uh, for Apple to, to you know, drive the stock higher. I don't think you're gonna see that this year. Uh, they have multiple challenges. One of them being the soft economy in China. You think of China as about 10% of Apple's revenue. The good news is you're seeing some pretty significant uh, subsidies coming from the wireless carriers. They still want you to get on a 5G device because they've invested billions in the network. But I don't think we're gonna get that sustained lift in the stock from the iPhone this year. I don't think the titanium is a big needle mover, uh, nor is you know essentially the Apple version of OnStar, things of that nature. They have the de facto price increase, essentially because they're not offering the 128 megabit uh, Pro Max. That could help a little, but yeah. I don't think you'll get them this year. All right, but again, connected to, I mean, are you saying it's because demand is not going to be what people anticipate that the stock won't move up? Correct. Okay. As just, reflected just want to make sure you mentioned a number of different things there. September quarter sales after the launch, so correct. Well, what is it that's not enticing consumers then, in your opinion? Obviously, China's a separate story and very much unclear, I would add. You know, we had the, that potential government ban, although, again, there it's still unclear. What do you think is, is not going to motivate people to upgrade perhaps at the same rates that they have in the past? Yeah, I just don't think there's a lot of incrementality between the 15 and the 14. Uh, we still have a challenging macro. However, Apple's performed very well in a challenging macro, even at the iPhone sales level. Uh, the lack of incrementality, uh, not a lot of newness, still persistent challenges in macro. And Apple's pulled a lot of levers already. They've already done essentially the buy now, pay later. I think they have 50% north of 50% of their iPhone sales already on installments. So that's not low-hanging fruit to be picked. Uh, Tom, you mentioned the carrier incentives uh, being significant here. Is that a key driver of demand? Are they any different than they've been in the past? I don't think they're different, but I had been concerned going into the launch that you would see the carriers scale back uh, the incentives. Uh, but I think that that's very encouraging that you're seeing still robust incentives from the carriers. And that, you know, maybe that'll result in better than expected sales for Apple. But I had been concerned going into the launch, but now I'm not concerned. But I don't know that I'll be enough. Hey, Tom, finally, you know, one of the bull arguments the company certainly would make is that iPhones that are traded in uh, do retain their value better than Android, and those get you, uh, sold in the secondary market, and that in turn sort of ampl amplifies the installed base and leads to more services over time. Is that a material part of the story? It is a material part of the story, Carl, but I would say that there's not a lot of incrementality there, meaning I don't think the 14 did a better job holding value than the 13 than the 12, things of that nature. Uh, that is a reason, though, that the consumers are so fond of their iPhones, is that they do retain their value. Uh, generally speaking, that makes it less expensive to upgrade to the next generation device. But I don't think, again, there's a lot of incrementality there that'll drive the iPhone 15 sales. Tom, thank you.